<laughs> that's what I said. I'm out here like this. <laughs> Shit. Uh, welcome back to Mining Diamonds, where we get all in your business, because we all about business. Everything from showing you the real definition of generational wealth, hip you to a little bit of financial literacy. We like to talk about people that own profitable and successful businesses, hear their whole story. I have my co-host with me, uh, Kia Star. You know, it's a Harlem thing. My brother Beef on the left side of me, and we just here to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And today we're happy to bring to the table uh, we got two people that one, you know, one is very, very legendary, you know, and the other one is somebody that I've always known to be about his business. We have Mr. A. Donahue Baker, and then we have the legendary Vin Rock from Naughty by Nature. And it's a pleasure because we're going to be talking about we're going to have a really extensive conversation about businesses and growing businesses and and how to scale and everything else. And especially with the focus of like real estate and you know, I want to even talk about the real estate that's yet to come, which is the metaverse, because that's mm -hmm. something I saw that Vin is, has an interest in, and uh, it's going to be a great conversation. Let's get started. So, Mr. Donahue, mm -hmm. t just give us a brief intro about, you know, who you are, how you got your start. Sure, sure. So, started in the music game um, as a music producer. Um, from there, I, I had a label deal on Sony, got dropped, and really pivoted towards real estate. My first purchase in real estate was a, a duplex. Lived in one side, rented out the other. And uh, today I own over 500 units. So my goal was literally every single year, I just wanted to double the amount of units that I owned. That's what we um, call a glow up. Tr trying, yeah. you know. But what, what I've realized <laughs> is that at that particular point in time, there was a way in which, you know, there was a, there was a language. There was a certain language to making money and getting money. And I, I, real estate has been overlooked for so long that I was like, yo, I really had to focus on that. But rich people, wealthy people, they got a way in which they not only can make money, but they keep it, right? So I went to school, I became a CPA, had my own practice. So hold on, so is school where you learned the language of money? School helped me to learn the language of money, right? Being a CPA. You gotta tell them what a CPA is. CPA is a public accountant, right? A certified public accountant is a CPA. Mm -hmm. And basically, what I, what I had to practice over 200 clients, and what I basically showed them how to do is how not only to make money, but also to shield it, protect it, invest it right, and, and using the tax laws basically allow when you make money to not give as much of it away to the government as possible. A lot of people in the entertainment industry, they get these big checks, but they don't really know how to keep that money. So part of the strategy that I'd employed is that everyone should have an LLC. Everyone should have a mechanism by which you can keep some of the money that you're supposed to give to the government. So when you say have an LLC, you're encouraging people to think of themselves as a business, essentially, right? Yeah, or absolutely. You are a business. So whether your business is profitable or not, there's still tremendous amount of tax advantages in own, owning an LLC. So why are they allowed to keep this money, per se? Well, not keep this money. Well, explain to them why you're saying they could keep this money in because they really can't keep the money, but this is a way for you to hold money a little bit longer than you would have to. Right. Yeah, no, nah, it's a way to keep it. You know, it's a way to keep it. I'll show you exactly how. Like, let's say um, you have a company. Basically, the way that we tell you how to build wealth, it's whatever you do, whatever you're good at, you should have an LLC. And under that LLC, you should be living through your LLC. So if you have a, a certain lifestyle, if you live a certain way, and it's through an LLC, everything you do becomes 100% tax write-off to a certain extent. Yeah, let's just say that, you know, you need to uh, travel. You know, if you travel or if you, if I'm, for me, it was real estate. I'm look. if I'm going to another country, I'm actually looking for real estate opportunities. So my travel, my hotel, you know, my meals, all of that becomes a tax write-off. Mm -hmm. So I'm living 100% through my LLC. And that is worth something, you know? It's like the money that I make, I can write it off against the profits. So that's basically what it is. That's how you keep all the money. That's what rich people do. I remember you know? years ago, like a lot of times, you get a lot of information just from your friends, your peers. Mm -hmm. Like, And nowadays it's like social media, you know, like whatever you see online. But years ago, um, I was telling someone I wanted to, create an LLC like I was thinking mm. along those lines and they were like nah don't do that because you got to pay taxes or it costs too much money or you know whatever the case is so I'm like well it doesn't really cost that much to start an LLC but then they were saying like yeah but you, the taxes that you have to pay it's you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like I think people get a little afraid of that nah you shouldn't be afraid of paying taxes right so part of 
like one of the things that I talk about is like the six levels to build, the six levels to get to generational wealth, right? And I'll run through them real quick. Level one is really just at a level where you can just say, look, everyone in the technology in the country that we live in, we live in the wealthiest country at the wealthiest time in human history, right? So everyone should be able to make at least $100,000 a year, right? That's, that's basically that's the bold. first- that's the first goal. So it shouldn't be no poverty existing at all. But level one is making $100,000 a year. We call that being a thousandaire, right? And you can do that a number of different ways. But at that level, you know, the next thing becomes ownership. And that's at level two, it's about how do you own? And for me, it's been real estate, but it can be a company or it could be IP, it can be whatever, but you need to own something. So ownership at level two and then level three, it's really all about what we talked about with the LLC. Basically, Basically, getting your personal credit to 720, locking your personal credit, and living exclusively through your LLC. Now, once you do that, get to level four. At level four, the idea is through the business that you set up. That's why it's important to have the LLC. Through that business, you rely on your business credit to really get all the financing, all the funding, all the loans, everything you need, right? So at our institution, which we'll talk more about it, you know, Money Avenue, we basically encourage people, you know, through your business, go out and get a million dollars in debt, right? A million dollars in debt that's not connected to your personal credit. Then once you do that at level five, the debt that you created becomes equity. Technically at that point, you become a millionaire. Then at level six, we got tools, trust, things like that that you can set up to transfer that wealth that you've created to your other, so your heirs, you say, your generations. When and you stuff say like million that. dollar debt, that's like a loan? It could be a loan, it could, but it's, 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 it's debt in terms of, buy, for me, it's been mortgages, right? So I basically set out to get a million dollars in debt through mortgages. That's right. good that's, debt, that, right? That, that's, that's what I want, I want people to know that because when you say debt, people are like, how, why would I? So you got to explain the debt. It's not really debt, but it is debt, right? It's debt. It's 100% debt, but it's good debt and it's bad debt. So when I say debt, I'm not talking about uh, going out buying cars and clothes and, and things like that. What PPP would you, loans. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> yeah, you got to explain yeah. to them. Like you, we, you, you, you acquired some real estate that equals a million dollars, and now you turned that into something that you switched that over to where you can keep it. A hundred percent. So, so Jim, it's right there. It's understanding. And that's what I call the language of money. Like you can't, you, you can't be taking high interest rate loans and then talking about saving and saving at a low interest rate. It's really a trade-off between debt. So when, when I go out and I get a, a half a million dollar loan, I'm basically buying an asset, a real estate asset that pays that half a million dollars. The tenants pay for that. And then over time, that debt turns into equity and that turns into net wealth, net worth and wealth, which we pass on to our children and our heirs. So I got a question. So I got a couple, couple mm -hmm. of cribs and one of them, I got some money there sitting there. Mm -hmm. Some one of my dudes that do houses helped me build one of the houses. He was telling me like, "Yo, it's a lot of equity right there right now. I don't know if it's gonna be there that long, but you need to figure something out so you could kind of pull that out." So, what what would you be advice for a person, a person like myself in a situation like that that really mm -hmm. don't know? what he means by, yo, you got the equity, you need to pull it out, or, or how I should pull it out, or the way to pull it out, or, you know what I mean? So right. I, I wanna know that I know there's a lot of people also that probably have homes and don't understand what right. they have or what they sitting on. So a lot of my approach to real estate has really been about monthly living, cash flow, right? So I, I, I purchase real estate that pays me to own it. Every single month, I should be getting positive income, mm -hmm. right? So in your situation where you have some equity, you know, that's good. But the question that I would ask is how much is that property, that asset paying me every single month? That's why I love multifamilies. That's why I love, um, really you can't, the business model doesn't really work in New York City or Jersey because property taxes are so high. But if you can get multifamilies in, in New York or New Jersey, you straight. So I, I look for those areas where I'm, I can, whatever whatever I can own pays me every single month. Mm. You know, so would I, you I, recommend a person that lives in New York try to find property maybe down south somewhere or? A hundred percent. Like if you can't, if you can't own a multifamily, if you can't get income producing property in New York or New Jersey, you got to go where you can mm -hmm. get multi you gotta get you, started. Or, or single families, yeah. even in the Midwest, you can have, you can, because the taxes aren't as high, 
right? right. And then um, another another thing is that once you do that, it's really all about you know. Uh, don't give away like most black families that, that that I've seen that have come to me. It starts like this: they have an uncle, they have a, a grandparent that passes away. Grandparent passes away. First thing they want to do is sell the sell the house, tap into the equity. To me, that's the wrong move. What you really want to do is figure out the same way your grandparent saved and, and earned and, and handed over this house to you. How could you turn that into cash flow? Because if you get enough cash flow, you don't have to literally have a job anymore. Mm -hmm. you, if you want to, you know, if you, it's not wrong with having a job. But to me, it's like I, my time is more valuable than that. But can I you be know? real, real practical mm -hmm. about it? Like, so say your grandfather, your uncle from somewhere that you don't know left this house, right? You don't really have cash. The house is you know, in dis not disrepair, but it's a little run down. You're going to need some money to get it to a position where you could actually rent it out or make money from it. Like that, what could you do to yeah, like like, be able to find that funding to invest into the refurbishing of the house to even make it even more livable or give it that equity that you want? Mm -hmm. So eventually you could, you know, if you wanted to sell it. You know, well, number one, what we do is, is like Jim was saying before, right? Does the house have equity? If it has enough <clears> equity <throat> into it, you can get a loan against the house. If not, you can get a, a, a loan. You can come to us, you can get a loan based on your credit. One of the, one of the reasons why I say, you know, bring your credit score to 720 is because you need credit. You got to have credibility, right? Right. So 720 is considered good credit. So if you get 720, lock it, and but live exclusively through your business, your LLC. So that means you say lock, lock it. it. What you mean lock it? What I mean when I say lock it is don't use it, right? So basically don't do that it. rule. Don't use you your lose. personal credit. Don't use right. your per business credit. Now, you, now do everything with business credit. Do everything through your business credit. So no credit. more just running stuff on so your that's cards. Not that's not liable on your personal credit. Is what you're it's, saying? It's totally right. It's not liable to your personal credit mm. um, at all, right? So basically, and you can have multiple, you can have 10, 20 businesses. You know, we talk all the time. Donald Trump has over 500 LLCs. It's not a mistake that he has over 500 LLCs. He's leveraging his opportunity to get more credit and more. And, and, and basically, that is, to me, that's the key. It's all about how much debt that you can get without without taking on enough risk for your personal, personal credit, self, yeah. you know? And that's exactly. that's it, you know? So. But a lot of times when you borrow money, right, the people who give you the money, they have a little bit of control, you know, over the product and what they want to see done to it. So a lot of times people don't want to give up equity or anything like that because they want control over what they're doing. 100%, right? But it becomes a thing where you have to build and you have to basically say, I'm a, I'm a good risk, right? Mm -hmm. So as the bank, the bank makes money through lending. So if they don't lend, if they don't, if they don't do loans, they, they're not making money. So there's an incentive there for you to have good credit. There's mm -hmm. an incentive there for you to have a business that has some assets that also has good credit, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how the system works, you know, and that's how, that's what we need to understand when we talk about the language of money, how there's power in having an LLC. There's power in not utilizing your personal credit. You know, like, like I said before, like when, when Jeff Bezos, when, when as the CEO and, and founder of Amazon, when Amazon needs money, Jeff Bezos doesn't sign his name on the, on the note, right? He doesn't do that, right? What he does is use the leverage of the company and that's what we have to do in our community is build our companies up yep. and then leverage the equity that we build up in our companies to get more money to scale. Well, that, that's what it's all about, like growing the scale, because that's mm -hmm. where you really start to make an impact on the community. Mm -hmm. But like, what if somebody was looking to get into this and they didn't have, you know, they didn't have access to money? Like I live in Texas where I know that there's a great rate on like tax liens. I think like you know, I started looking at that. Like, mm -hmm. if you go into the tax lien business or maybe even wholesaling, mm -hmm. like, how does, what's like kind of the entry level, you know, or you know, lowest points of entry to get into the real estate market or investing? So, where you could start building money and then building equity and be able to buy more house homes or buy more debt and flip mm -hmm. it. And because that's what I see no, some people have to do. They just start somewhere. It is. And, it, and there's nothing new under the sun. Like, it's all done. And one of the things that I think is really key that, 
we have to look at real estate, especially if you're a creative, especially if you're an artist, right? And you don't really have a, a, a strong business background, right? Because right. most of our parents, they don't teach us this. But one of the, the best ways to create wealth is through real estate. Now, what I've been doing in the past, I would say since COVID, because since the moratorium happened, right? Moratorium is basically the government doesn't allow landlords to evict tenants, right? It's illegal to do it right. through the moratorium. Right. From since it's been proved unconstitutional, but the courts are backed up. So, so tenants are basically living rent free. But what's happening is lots of landlords aren't paying their mortgages. Right. And because they're not paying their mortgages, they're not paying any taxes. And it's every single state there's been like this spike, this increase. So what I've done, I started in uh, Florida. I went to Polk County. We bought uh, just for $500, right? Now this, this is key. $500, I bought uh, a parcel of land. One for five fifty. I bought another parcel of land, so two parcels of land. Those that so piece for a thousand dollars, right? For a thousand dollars, I bought thousand, two parcels yeah. of land yeah. in Florida, Polk County. Right, that land itself is worth over eight thousand dollars a piece. Right, mm -hmm. I only pay five hundred. It's a tax lien, right? Over the counter, Florida is a tax deed state. So what they do is they'll foreclose. The county would foreclose, and for five hundred dollars, you know, I'm basically has have a property that's worth 8,000. Not a lot of money, but there's an ROI on that, right? Mm -hmm. So going along that, I went and I was like, you know what, let me look at other states. Mississippi, because I had to get out, of, get out of Jersey, get out of New York. Mississippi, another deed state the poorest state in the country, right? right. Lots of, um, you know, lots of land, lots of foreclosures and things like that going on. I bought 16 liens all wow. under $1,000, mm. but they're to houses. Now, houses in, in Jersey and New York, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. These houses worth thirty and 40000 But for, I paid, paid $16,000, I got 16 houses, and each one of those houses is worth about thirty and 40000 Tremendous ROI. Wow. That opportunity is existing. So to answer your question, the layperson, a person with $500, find out where there's opportunity for you to go get these liens, Find it. I, me personally, I would look at a deed state, a state that will foreclose for you, so you don't have to go get an attorney to foreclose, right. mm -hmm. and then focus on like over the counter. Because if you focus on over the counter deeds, you can pick pretty much just find. You know, Polk County had eighteen thousand properties, mm -hmm. wow. eighteen thousand properties, and half of them didn't even get bid on. So the opportunity is there. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that was, that was, I, I'd, I'd say another thing, you I know, our community overlooks. Stack every week for the <laughs> next year. Yeah, I would say another thing our community overlooks. Like, I come from a big family. KG mm -hmm. has a big family. We realize, and his brother does real estate as well. We realize amongst our family members, you may have 20 people between the two families paying rent, maybe even 30 people. Mm. And at, 30 people paying an average of 1700 a month in renting. Mm -hmm. So I know what you're saying. For the average layman, it's like, damn, I'm minimum wage, or I'm just trying to get by, I'm struggling to make rent, I may not have the credit to get into the game, how do I do it? Sometimes the best way, and a lot of us don't like it, the best way is through family members. At some way, you have to figure out two or three or four family members who you wouldn't mind living with. That's a three-family house. It's a four-family house. If you're able to bust down that mortgage, now you're in the game. Right. If you're able to share that amongst your family members, you're going to save on your what would be market rent, and now you have surplus to move forward. So a lot exactly. of times, we can't get along with each other to cut that cost. But next thing you know, 30 people are paying like $50,000 per month in rent. And it's just money going out the window. Money mm -hmm. going out the window. Literally. That's like a, a commitment, though. It's not a commitment. No, I'm you saying. You have to pay it anyway. Yeah, but to overlook whatever little discrepancies you have with your family and say there's a bigger picture at play. But how big it's is your sacrifice. family? You could go to and, and that's, that's, two or three of your favorite family people members. Because People from other walks of life, they do, do shit like that all, all the time. Day. Yeah, all like day. Uh, in all Texas, day. like, you know, my, my girlfriend will tell me, like, across the street from her, her mother's house is a, a Mexican family, and there's, like, eight people living in there. They got, like, seven cars outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, you got all these cars. Like, 
Why don't they and just they go move, move somewhere? But they bought this bank for the next two years, and then they all gonna buy separate houses and everybody exactly. gonna be living. Exactly. Yeah. So all those houses be next to each other, and like yeah. you know, and that's the play. It's not permanent. Is 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 temporary? Yeah. So let me ask you, from in your experience, how long does it take for people who are uneducated financially, right? Bad credit, all that type of stuff. So say you're starting out. 500, mm-hmm. sub 500, ruined your credit, you went through college, you did all of this, you ruined your credit, everything. How long does it take to make up that learning curve before you're like in a really good position to do something on average, would you say? So the thing is, is, is credit is just a tool. It's another tool, right? So there's people out there that can fix your credit in two weeks, three weeks. Mm-hmm. It's, it's possible, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not what I do personally, mainly because credibility <laughs> is... You know, the other part of credit is credibility. Like you need to have the credibility to do bigger deals. Like mm-hmm. if you're trying to be a millionaire, you need to, people need to be able to trust you mm-hmm. to right. say, well, look, this person has a 20, 30, 40 year history. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they don't have any late pays. They don't have any defaults. They don't have a bunch of people chasing them for money. Mm-hmm. You know, like me personally, I do real estate deals. Like I, we, like we buy apartment buildings right now, right? Literally 100 unit, 200 unit apartment building. I'm not going to do a joint venture with somebody that, that, you know, somebody's chasing for credit. Like, they're not paying a a $200 bill. Like, Mm. we talking about a $5 million deal here, you know, but that $200 is going to stop you from doing a much Mm. bigger deal because you in trouble, then they're going to come after me as a partner. Right right now, I don't know what. I think it was, I think a couple years ago when I was at one of these basketball games, I had tore my shoulder up. I was out of town, and and I guess I want... The ambulance or some kid. Yeah. I did not realize that not too long ago I wanted to go buy a property. So my credit was like six. So I'm like, what? And then they pull it, they like yeah. $380. And then you're supposed to <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck this shit is. But it's right. like they yeah. you did, you like yeah. that quick, some so small how you looking like you a poop put out here. Like, man, you don't even Y'all see that's a, a lot of people like that though that just have those negative credit yeah. marks. A hundred dollars you don't, you don't utility bill. So, yeah, yeah, like yo. jam you up, jam mm. you up. And but I think I think see, a lot of people think with success and with money it's a fast track to it. Mm-hmm. But a lot of this stuff is discipline, right? Mm-hmm. How many of us know we have these little nagging bills, stuff that's in the way? Ah, oh, that could wait. Mm-hmm. That could wait. Mm-hmm. How many times do we see our best friends, ourselves? neglect this stuff and all it does is compound and accumulate and Mm -hmm. people are calling your phone and all it takes is a little discipline to address it clean it up and now you move forward but people don't do that and then in the back of their head i can't get credit or i can't get into my first home because i know this stuff is lingering Mm -hmm. but the discipline is go clean it up clean yourself up you can't go to work every day smelling like crap Without right. getting in the shower, you got to right. clean yourself up to right. to be presentable, to get in the game. I think we saw this with this COVID pandemic, right? And a lot of businesses were trying to get money and couldn't mm-hmm. couldn't access the funds. One, because they weren't, you know, really doing things through a bank. They didn't have good bank relationships. And secondly, they didn't have their paperwork they in order, good, right? Good they didn't have their business mm-hmm. in order. Mm-hmm. And so it's like in a time of need, you're not even like... But it's crazy because when you feel... When you figure out really how easy it is to correct these things, exactly. right? Yeah. You're like, why exactly. didn't I do that? Like Angels I called, I was yeah. going through trying to call people to fix it, and my partner Pong was like, "You, you know, your experience." I'm like, I felt like I was in a commercial. I'm like, bitch, what you mean experience? Like, what are you talking about? And I, I do that shit myself right now, and I make the call. Give me 20 minutes. That shit would be all like, but you won't know how easy. That is to really work on your credit, get it back until you actually do it to have somebody to school you to the game. Yeah, it's it's like really that. easy. Mm-hmm. Like you could do it. I mean, everybody says, oh, you could do it yourself. But it takes that time where you get frustrated. Because for me, I would go through and like I remember so many like a few times I would like give money to somebody like mm-hmm. 700 mm-hmm. here, 1200 there. Like That's- they fixed my credit and this and a third. And then I finally realized what they were doing. And I was like, wow, man. Anybody like, can do just it. Doing- that's it. Just yeah, writing right. letters just, and just stuff like letters. that. Certified so, but the other, mail. I got two hundred right now. Because sometimes you don't you don't right want to see it on paper. You don't want to see how bad you look on paper. Like that's scary. It, it is, but it's like yo, you that's you, that's part of the education. Just being financially literate. But the other thing people don't know is that yes, you got your your three big credit bureaus. But when you dispute something that's on your credit, they go to 
what's called like tertiary and secondary sources to mm-hmm. to ver- to validate that information. Mm-hmm. So if you have something, you can you can also go to those sources and and stop them from collecting data on you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you're aware of that, right? So mm-hmm. once the the credit bureaus can't validate it, they can't keep it on your credit report. So there's tricks along the way that, mm-hmm. that you you know you need to know, you know, how to how to get all of these things removed from your credit, especially if you have really bad credit. You know, you really need to figure out how to how the systematically the systematic way of going about to get it how, removed. How long you been doing this? I've been doing what biz what as real a estate. real estate, I've been doing real estate over twenty years now. You know Yo. what I'm saying? Like it's been it's been something like originally. Like when, when I, I when I met yeah. this guy, like, and this is crazy. Like I was like, I think we were with I was I was working with Royce Five Nine. He had just got signed to Columbia. And you had the deal at the Columbia and I met you and you had A Marie. You know, so like you was the executive producer and had the production company and stuff like that. So that's a, a while ago. But I want to know, like, what was the spark? Like, what was the moment that you were like, I'm doing something else and this is what I'm doing? Because having a, an artist on a major label that reached some level of success, people say, I'll double, I'll triple down in it. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and you can speak to this too, Vinny. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Jim too. You know what I'm saying? You're in the music business. You know, the money's coming. You see the opportunity there. It's like, okay, I had this kind of artist or I had this kind of deal. I could replicate it. I could find success again. But you were just like, nah, let me just go here. And have been, have more levels of, like much more level of success than now mm-hmm. than what you're doing then. Yeah, for me, it was like, um, I was in the music industry, but I was struggling for so, just to get a break for so long, just to get an opportunity. Then when we got a six figure check from Sony, I just had seen so many artists along the way blow their money, right? Get that first check and, you know, did something stupid, whatever, buy cars, whatever. So I all all along when I knew I was, I was gonna get a check, I basically said, I'm gonna find something and real estate was it for me. So I went and I bought my first property. I still got that property till today. Fire. And and you know it's crazy because I, it was a six unit right. I bought a six unit in uh, in North New Jersey, mm. um, and from and that, that was like what with like ninety early two thousand. I paid one thirty for it. Right, wow. pay one thirty four. Today, that property is worth over seven hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You know what I'm saying in Newark. You know, and it to me, it's like when it, when it was rough, when times was rough, I was getting income from that, and that helped me get through whatever whatever I was going through. And I to the to the point where is when I built up equity in it, took that money out, bought more. You know, bought more and more real estate. To me, it was about cash flow. So that was my plan. Was it scary when you bought your first one? Did you feel like this is a like a big, a big deal? It, it really wasn't scary for me because um at the time it was like that was what I always wanted to do. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to not just like I didn't really care about being flashy or, or doing anything. I just wanted the income because I knew that I had to live. I had to, you know, I don't want to be forced to go get a job or what, you know what I'm saying? So I knew that, that without that income, it wasn't going to happen. I'll probably be in somebody's you know, somebody's office in a cubicle, you know, just that, that's just not me, you know, nothing wrong with that. But I just, that was the most, that was the fear that was in the back of my head that was like, yeah, this is what I got to do. So every money, every big check that I got subsequently, I was buying assets, mm-hmm. assets that paid me to own them, you know, and that was the, to me, the science behind really getting to the point where, you know, you can be a multimillionaire, you can, you know, write your own, do whatever you want, write your own ticket. If you want to go give back your time, you can do it now. And that's what, you know, as a professor, that's what I do right now is I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I want to help people, help the younger generation see that there's many different ways and, and things and, and how options. how the kids, uh, the students adopting to this? It's tough because because twenty year old now twenty year olds now they're different right they don't want to work for a company for thirty years mm-hmm. so they are looking for that way in which they can still take their time and turn it into money right so and with the advent of technology um, you know I'm surrounded by a tremendous amount of creative energy so there's lots of creativity that they have these great ideas and they're looking for people to fund or, or they're looking for um, just the opportunity to scale. That's that's right. ultimately what it is. Like putting out something, like I know a cat that's in our class right now, young young man, he's made some money off of sneakers, just doing down in, down in Morehouse. And he just started just, you know, he was a sneakerhead, but he made a whole business off of that. 
you know, and not too long ago, you know, he started another business as an entrepreneur. They just did a write up in him on in Black Enterprise. Mm. So to see those stories and to see kids that are that are like the next generation put it together, to me, that's the most fulfilling. Well, let the, the, I want to jump in and because, uh, you know, my favorite topic, you know, these days is technology, mm -hmm. you know, and like it, and it's everybody here at the table. Like Jim is invested heavily in the cryptocurrency with his own coin. Kia and I, we're delving into this metaverse and NFT space, you know, and we're starting to see that people are like more open, like right now, more open to technology. And you, you let's talk about Money Ave, which is fintech, mm -hmm. you know, and like, what is that? What is that? And how is that going to serve the people? Like, are you taking all this knowledge that you have? Because you dropped a lot of knowledge here, but mm -hmm. is that all encompassed in the app? Like, what is it like? A hundred percent. So the what we want to do is just do something different, like do something different than what's out there in the marketplace. One of the things that banks don't do is they don't show you how to build wealth, mm -hmm. right? So what we want to do is take banking and democratize it to the point where it gives you access to capital, right? Shows you ways in which you can take $500 and make money off of it. Banks don't show you how to do that. What they do is they're just happy with you put, making a deposit and keeping your money there and they make interest off your money. But what we do is we basically bring you through a process that a lot, that gives you access to not only loans and lending, but it, it I mean, we doing stuff like we, you can do car refinance. Like if you have a, a car, the same way you refinance your house, you can refinance your car, pull money out, right? Out That's your car? Reef, car refinancing, right? It's so so <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> Benz, buck 50. Are you telling me you're going to refinance Could refinance the loan that I just took out for 100%. the bands? That's 100%. And how the fuck does that work? For, in my, what, like, what do you mean? How could, what type <laughs> of money are you taking out? Like, how, like, so what, how does it you, work? It, it's the same way a house would do it, right? The same way you would refinance your house. It's refinancing your car. So the Getting equity you maybe, of the payments you put on that motherfucker? You, right. So the, so the value of your car. And then let's say so you- So the car is 150. Right. Car is 150. And let's say you owe 100 on it. Right, okay. you refinance. You can either pull out. You can basically lower your payments. Number one, if you have payments, right, can lower your payments. Interest rates have been falling, so there's there's always that that option. Now, typically, what most banks do to do car loans, they chart. If you have a four year old car loan, you're still getting a, a, a high, a much higher interest rate. Right, we're able to basically see where there's opportunity and evaluate and, and basically put money in your pocket. That's basically the bottom I'm line. You. By cutting your costs on your car. That's that's one way, right? Definitely one way. I would way. just lower my payment. <laughs> you can you <laughs> could lower had to. You know? Right. But some people own their cars free and clear, right? Some people just and they need money, right? Another mm -hmm. thing that we do that other banks won't is for every LLC that you have, we can get you fifty thousand dollars of business credit that's not attached to your personal credit profile. That sounds amazing. And why why is fifty thousand such a, a big like, thing? That sounds like something I need for the bodega right now. That's what I'm trying to say. I need to hear shit like this so I don't yeah, have to right, dip right. in my own pocket to finance this bodega that I'm about to go on business with in Harlem, and it ain't gonna take too much money. And I got some LLCs. Well, that's it. That's that's part of what it is. Like we wanna we wanna show people how to take your business and make your business. Be the source of everything you well, do, you, right? Use me. Yeah. Use me. That's <laughs> an example with my yeah. whole thing. Show me. You heard? Well, we won't have to show you. Vin could tell you because Vin came to us as a, as a client too. So yeah. he could tell you about your experience with that. I did. With that, I did. You know, um, because you know, I run my online shop. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's Naughty by Nature's online shop. But I opened up Uncle Vinny Productions when I started rocking with them opened up my business credit line and I basically licensed Naughty by Nature's online shop uh, from them and I'm running my business through Uncle Vinny Production. So the business credit is going, line of credit is going. I don't have to use my personal, you know, credit and we're scaling. And then the money that I'm investing in, I'm able to run off of Shopify, show my Shopify numbers, and now I'm scaling my global worldwide licensing deals. Mm. You see? So that's the way it works. And really that's why I partnered up with um, Money Ave, showing people how to bank. And I think Jimmy and I, you know, in our industry, we have tons of people who are making off the books money. 
but they're afraid to put that money into real play. Mm. Like my girl, she's a bartender, crushes her. <laughs> How much money can you fit under the mattress you and you're right. afraid but to move it? So you say the money under the mattress. So this is where I tell all the niggas I know where this cryptocurrency is very important. You familiar with you? You very versed in crypto? <laughs> so I, I try to, so I got a, 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 a crypto ATM machine businesses and this is one of the best things I could use, the best tools I could use to hit my niggas on how to diversify their money at the least bit, because like you said, you put your money into the bank, you put 10,000 in, you make 10 cent on it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. 10, 10 cent on 10,000, mm -hmm. right? Some right. shit like that. Mm -hmm. Now, that same 10,000, you put that into this ATM crypto machine and tap on Bitcoin or tapped on Ethereum. Now, that 10,000 is going to make an average of 7% on that 10,000 every year or whatever dollar you put in that, mm -hmm. which is sitting under your bed right now, accumulating them for dust. And you won't get and a dollar losing on top value of you. because mm -hmm. of inflation. Inflation mm -hmm. is going sky and, high. And that 7% is a low number because if one of them things, Ethereum, Bitcoin, catch a, 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 a rise, then just mm -hmm. 7% or something that you're not doing nothing with. Like you're not even, mm -hmm. you don't even, you, you, now imagine teaching them that, then teaching them how to go even further and Cardona and show them how to diversify and put money on these things that are rising rapidly and turning 10,000 into 60,000 in 30 days and, you, you know, that's, no, this, is what I, this is what I've been trying to hip a lot of the people that I'm closest to and the people in the culture and the people in the hood to because we always the last to know all of these things about this financial literature right. that you nah, just Nah, it's, it's big, Jim. And I, first of all, I want to commend you on what you're doing because I did. I, I happened to hear you talk about that. And I was just like, yo, I think personally what, need, what needs to happen in that space is that the education component of it too, but also how do we work together? Right, because that's the missing component. Unless, unless it's like this community engagement that people can really just come together and, and invest in ourselves, right. invest in like there needs to be a, a, whether it's a coin or whatever. Like somebody has to be the gold standard to step out mm -hmm. there. And I think it's just so many shit coins. I mean, that's that's literally what's going on. We don't know who to trust. Right, you know. Yeah. So that's what goes that's on the a lot. Problem. But in our culture, there's a lot of selfishness going on. So we have the power to turn anybody's coin into real money overnight. So I got a couple coin, roughly at a cent right now. We didn't roll to two cent. Mm -hmm. Ethereum went up and went back down. We back down to like a cent, a little bit over a cent, which mm -hmm. is real money. Right. Actually a cent. But we have some of the most powerful influencers in the world that I even know and shit like that. For them to even mention a capital coin and mm -hmm. slowly take it up to five cent. And next you know it's 20 cent. Next thing you know, you, everybody that made a shitload of money mm -hmm. off of us alone is talking about it like anything else, like a piece of art that the people of other walks of life talk about. And now all of a sudden, this art went from 10,000, now it's 1.2 because this person said, oh, this artist is the best artist I've seen in the past 15 years. And now this fucking painting is shot up. It's the same thing, the same power we have inside this industry, but we always seem to relinquish our power to the other walks of life that use us for our influence instead of us mm -hmm. using it for ourselves. Right. It never works. Fuss. But you know what, Jim? I always say the glass is always half full because I commend you, too, on going hard out here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just trying your best to explain what crypto is, the metaverse. And, you know, you have to lead by example and eventually they'll come. And this is what happened with me. You know, traditionally, I've always invested in real estate and or my business itself right. Right. because it's definitely positive cash flow. I've never really played in the stock market. I had much money in the stock market, but with crypto, I understand it. And I'm like, if I miss those plays, the dot com booms and yep. all of that stuff, now in the last, what, since 2017, I've been in crypto and I've seen my money grow exponentially without even taking too much of a risk. And where where the, the game is right now, it'll never go below really where I got in at, you know? Right, so right. I encourage a lot of our young people and just a lot of our peers, 
You don't have to bet the house on it. Take a don't. couple of hundred dollars. And figure Take it out. Take money you would trick off in the and club with. It out. You go in a club and bust down yes. and get a few bottles with your people. Yes. You can put two hundred, three hundred dollars yes. I mean, and buy some coin and get in. Yes. So let me ask a question. You figure that shit out. That two, three hundred dollars gonna turn into two, three thousand dollars. I'm about yeah. to put five thousand in this let thing. Let me I dump just... a little more. <laughs> dump a little so more. So let me ask. Yesterday, UM, right? United Masters just announced that they partnered with Coinbase and they're gonna start or have the option to pay the artists with in crypto, in crypto, in crypto yeah. right? It's genius. How should these artists, right, like approach that? Like, what's the benefit? How can they actually like use this, leverage it up? I, w- I would say this. They, first of all, they'll, they'll pay out fractionally. You could determine if you have a hundred dollar check. I could put $20. Give me $20 uh-huh. in crypto. Give me yeah, $80 in cash. In cash. Okay. Right. I'm yeah. cool. I could have any variation mm-hmm. of that. And then you have to study the coins because a lot of this stuff is education and they say you never stop learning. So I don't care what degrees you have. You this Trust world me. is moving fast. Trust and me, tech. I'm in a hundred Discord servers That's learning right. every day. So mm-hmm. the education never stops. You have to inform yourself on some of the best coins. I think for a lot of artists, Ethereum is a safe one. Bitcoin is a safe one. But Ethereum has that practical use because a lot of NFTs are built off of it. So if I were an artist and I was receiving royalties with United Masters, I'd say, give me $30 in Ethereum. Right. Give me the rest in cash. Let me see what this Ethereum thing is doing. Then you have a pool. I would take a third. Well, see, I'm knowledgeable about it, so right. It's if different. You're scared. You know what I mean, like, if you're scared, yeah. yeah. But if I would take a third, <laughs> like, pay me a third in crypto. You heard? And Which I'm going, crypto? It don't matter. Yeah. You did. It wouldn't matter at that point. I'll probably take it in Ethereum or take it in Bitcoin. Something that I know is is not gonna go nowhere. It's definitely I like that stable, bitch. Yeah. But I don't want to use it no more. I'll freeze that bitch and mm. put it to the side. Mm. And when I'm ready, I'll use some of that shit to start di- 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 diversifying and shit like that. I right, give me some of this Cardona. I right, give me some of this. You dig? Mm. Let me go and then start surfing and mm. start learning more about what's hitting. And plus, it's a like, man, you use a click of a button, you can learn so much shit about the crypto. But one thing I would tell them people is. Before you get paid in crypto, you need to learn about crypto. Exactly. Facts. Right. Mm-hmm. Facts. You definitely have to learn. And, like, you know, because, like, you know, I was early to crypto, you know, and I, I kind of stumbled on it by accident. But once I got in it, it was just like you start to you, even though you feel like I don't know the technology, eventually you start to learn when you start to apply it. Mm-hmm. When you start to play with the money, when you start to look at different cryptocurrencies, when you start to go, wow, like, okay, what is this cryptocurrency related to? Okay, what is it does? What was it built on? Like, what's the coin value? Did mm-hmm. they IC, When did it ICO? Like, mm-hmm. what was their ceiling? Like, what is the market cap of this company? Wow, versus this company. It seems like this market cap is a little bit more stable. I'm going to put some money here. Or this one's growing at a certain percentage. And then it feels like how when I was a kid and I used to look at the back of the newspaper and see all the stock quotes and look at it like, yo, it looks like Chinese to me. But now I can understand this one. So it's like the same thing. You just always have to be open to learn. And in the past, those doors were closed to us because you had to get a Series 7, you know, to really start trading. You know, Mm -hmm. you had to be with a broker who would take all these crazy fees. It wasn't this. It wasn't this. It wasn't the freedom of technology. It's very transparent. And now we're moving decentralized. So it's even a more freedom that we have that we've never had before. But yet and still the the responsibility is on you individually to learn because you will get passed up. Mm-hmm. And it will only be your fault. And like you said, like you miss, you passed the dot com bubble. Like some people have missed on crypto the first wave and the second wave, and they, they saw Bitcoin crash and they're like, oh yeah, it was over. And now it's back at the same point. I mean, Bitcoin's a little bit hard to get involved with. You could buy bits and pieces of it, but I would yeah. encourage people to really stick with Ethereum, like you were saying right now, because that's mm-hmm. pretty much going where Bitcoin was at. Like, what is it that? 3,500, some shit like right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I remember clearly years back, somebody like, yo, you need to buy a couple of Bitcoins. That shit is 3,000 right now. Like, <clears throat> them same people that brought a few Bitcoins at 3,000, it's yeah, yeah, stacked yeah. Mm-hmm. up right now. And Ethereum mm-hmm. is even, I feel like Ethereum is even bigger than Bitcoin because building on NFTs, you have a whole platforms, mm-hmm. you know, where the NFT has its own value, but it's all built off Ethereum blockchain. So you're like, it makes sense. Because you have more of an incentive to put money into Ethereum, you know? I, that's like, just I did a so, fucking, well, not a, not a, 
I did a I did a, my, I did a personal audit yesterday, a personal crypto audit. Like, <laughs> let me see what the fuck is going on in here, right? Because I don't mm-hmm. never mm-hmm. any money I've made in it. I it, or I just leave it there. I don't look leave at it. it. Yesterday, mm-hmm. I, I, I blew my fucking mind yesterday. After I paid <laughs> out a hundred and some k, I was just like, so I paid a hundred k and this. Still is mine. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, I didn't even know that all this money was sitting in my computer. Like, what? This shit is in the computer. Like, I just, I'd be laughing. Like, there's no way all this money is just sitting right here on this fucking <laughs> What do you right mean here. you paid out? You had to pay bills or you? All right, so I, I, I got a partner and shit like that. So we use advertisement dollars. We use uh, different shits to really help me out with, how, with all our stuff to accumulate, help me with diversifying and shit like that. So I pay out. 10% here to so my partner, 10%. So after okay. I'm saying, after I paid okay. out right. what I need to certain people and shit like that, I was still left with this so much fucking money that it kind of blew my mind. And it was like, yo, I'm really only spending 4% of my time on this shit. Right. Like literally, like, and, mm-hmm. it's, and as knowledgeable as I may be at it and people seeing like, I really don't know too much because it's that extensive. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So and I'm like, changing if, every if day. I spend mm-hmm. 10% of my time, I probably stop. I probably would just, just so this now my partner stays on the computer for 28 hours a day my brother like he don't sleep right. and I'll be like yo you burnt out like why is you on like what yo you 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 drinking Red Bulls every second like yo but now I see why he's fucking rich like that nigga's fucking loaded like low <laughs> right right you heard? Crazy. he's watching those candles <laughs> bro like the bro he's like yo so I'm like I, this shit is so for it to be so extensive is room for everybody, every one of the people that look like us to learn about it and make some money aside from what they used to, their real, jobs and their nine to fives. And not saying real that talk. we don't need that, but this can help you. This can add to mm-hmm. everything we've learned to do systematically. Like nigga, you go to work, you get a nine to five. Now there's a chance to show people how to add some money to that nine to five. They'll show you what a little bit of life is like. Cause everybody I know been, Never had these opportunities. Real estate is for the few in the hood that kind of say I'm doing mm-hmm. real estate. Other than that, besides selling drugs, and it wasn't really too many options mm-hmm. in the hood to show people how to make some money. Right. Right. No, there was, wasn't. Was facts. So, Just selling drugs, really. I'm sorry, but I told you we was going to run out of time. I told you it was never. I told you it was not. Gonna, the yes. Car car service the yes. Us? Yes. You have like. I want to give you I'm one minute good. to say the one thing you got to say to wrap number? it up. Yeah. We got the I info, but I'll he got to catch a yeah, flight. I want to talk to you yeah. about that bodega business. I got, <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. LLCs. I need to get that 50000 <laughs> to put it into the revamp of that bodega. I'm gonna Let's, do Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. But, I'm gonna nah, this, you up. This so this is, your, this is this your last minute before, because I want to make sure you get your flight. Right. And, you know, thank you for your graciousness and waiting for us. But let us, you know, take us out. Oh, yeah, your socials, everything. Plug yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so you can follow me in social at our A Donahue Baker, A D O N A H U E Baker on all platforms. Instagram, I'm on a lot, but I'm um, also got a YouTube channel. You can follow me there. Um, most importantly, definitely go to your app store, download Money App. By the time you uh, hear this, right, and y'all should be coming out soon, yeah. but by the time you see this, the app should be in full swing. We're going to be providing some tremendous value, right? If you're interested in building wealth, definitely download the Money Av app. You can go to our website, moneyav.com mm. and, and check us. Vin is going to be rolling with us. That's we right. doing what we're going to do and we definitely want to help people, creatives. We want to help people that are, that are looking to get into real estate. We want to help them build wealth, right? We want to give them access to capital. We want you to basically, the, the money that you have that you want to disband, we want to show you how you can get involved in some things that you never thought you could. Maybe the tax lien that we talked about show you how you can take 500 and buy a piece of land that's worth a lot more than that right there's many different strategies find your bucket find your key we talked about crypto we got a crypto wallet that's coming out as well that's fine um, that's you know dope. we ran out of time but there's so much stuff that's to dope. talk about yes. so, and that's why, and everybody that's, the crypto wallet if you want to learn about crypto start with the crypto wallet you got to go to money right. Ave. and that's why you know i partnered with um money Ave. so 
I just want to be the evangelist to our community, especially, Jimmy, all the strippers, the bartenders, <laughs> the party promoters. Because, again, there's a lot of cash yes, that's yes. sitting off the yes. grid. Right. Yes. And, it ain't you know, doing nothing sitting under the bed. That we can be circulating right. and you recirculating. You can clean this money up. And I'm not talking about dirty money. I'm right. talking yeah. about good, honest, yep. hardworking money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You could clean this money up and you could put it in a different trajectory mm -hmm. And start using the money. Just don't sit on it, man. Because if you're sitting on this cash times inflation, especially what we'll be faced with the next couple of years, yeah. inflation is going to kill the value of that money. Yeah, 5% inflation right now, if you don't know. You did a 25 cent bag of chips is now a dollar. 50 cent bag of chips is now. Inflation oh, is real. Yeah. That's you gotta love Jim, man. He, he's our weatherman. He's our financial <laughs> analyst. You know? He's the, the, the king of the streets. Yeah, all yeah. that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, but this is dope what you're doing. But all, like I said, I've always been onto your business moves from reading the Source magazines back in the day, way before we had Instagram and all that. And they was always pointing you out to be a businessman and they'd talk about your different endeavors on the side as y'all started to, you started to focus more on your business and shit like that. So I definitely tip my hat to you besides the legend you are and shit like that. Yeah, amen, way amen, For people like us, but just to see you staying in the game and probably more relevant without people oh even know how relevant you are. He just are. showed right, me his right, metaverse. Right. I mean, like, <laughs> right. Right. Like, like, you know, I wish we had can't talk about it. Don't get into it right now. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> want to connect, yeah. connect yeah. with yeah. shit. I definitely want to connect with y'all. This, is, this has been a dope show. Like. Yo, very gave the people a lot of knowledge, and that's what we try to give them. Let them mm -hmm. understand certain things that they didn't understand, but understand it in a way that they can understand. Let's, I would exactly. say when the, when the app comes out, let's let's really sit down again and let's go through the app. Go in, you know it. what I'm exactly. saying? Because I'm let's like, look, yeah. you could take an LLC and pull fifty racks out. Oh my god! Oh, we're gonna like, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna oh, get to on. it. We're, yeah. we're gonna get to it. Yeah. This was a great episode. I mean, there were so many gems. Like, wow, like. Pulling fifty thousand dollars out of an LLC so you could really jumpstart your business. Definitely diamonds. It's a major. Had a lot of definitely had a lot of diamonds. It was dope. Um, always been a fan of Uncle Vin. Um, but just to hear the knowledge that both of them had today about business, about what you could do to add to your business, how you can mm -hmm. pull money from your business, and the whole real estate story he had in five hundred units is that's a lot of money. So it's let's impressive. just say he's getting a thousand dollars on each of those units. That's a half a million every month he's making. Crazy. Now let's just say that he's only making 10% of that for his pocket every month. That's still $50,000. A month. For his pocket, which right. is a half a million clean, which we know it's way more than that. I'm just saying yeah. on a low scale because we all know that rent is not a thousand dollars on 500 units. So that shit might be one point something million a month Right, and he's so like nonchalant about Ooh. it. And he, right. and he started like Light very low, like, like very, very low. Very very low. And right. so I, I appreciate it because it, it makes it seem like it's actually attainable. Right, right, definitely. it's doable. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like right. get money, I mean, people have a very weird relationship with money, right? right? Either like you're afraid of it or you're not. And right. when you're afraid of it, like I'm one of those people like, you know, it's a, it's a challenge for me. Like I'm afraid, I'm afraid to let it go. Right. But then it's like, I know that I stop myself sometimes because I'm not making it work for me. Right. Right. Because I just don't like being broke. So, like I been the person that's like I end up paying a late fee because I didn't want to part with the cash, mm. which is just like but counterproductive. I've been talked about discipline. I understand. Discipline, definitely. Because yeah. I have no respect for money. I never had respect for money because the money don't make me. I know how to make money and I always had the attitude. You dig? Yeah. But I got to change my attitude. I need to be more responsible. Like I mean, said. he said, he, he was like with $500. He went and bought parcels of a land, right. and he said he bought two, and that's a thousand dollar investment that wound up being worth like eight thousand exactly. dollars. So that's sixteen thousand exactly. dollars over a thousand dollars. That's a pretty good profit. Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, and that's and not his. he didn't even have to do anything so to you it. Pay it. It's his. He brought it off a, off off a, off foreclosure. Right. Five hundred dollars is a wrap. He ain't got to pay nothing else. What's wow. that? Twenty dollars in taxes, maybe a year. Yeah, that's it. And you can go across the country and do that. Right. And sooner or later, somebody's gonna want that. It's gonna be a part of something. That might be a piece of land that's about to be part of a construction site. They're building a building. They need that little a, parcel. A gas station, got, right? It's all type yeah, of shit. It could like be yo, anything. this is an amazing show. Dope, right now. man. This Dope. is great. I'm well, happy we're here. Mining diamonds. Once again, mining diamonds. Nope. We'll Check be back us to out. Get all of your business. 
because we all, all about, about business. business. That's it. And that's it. Yo, check us out on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, and Twitter and Instagram is underscore Mining Diamonds. Uh, Instagram is underscore Mining Diamonds podcast. And also check us out on our Discord server, Mining Diamonds. We'll be Fire. there to talk to you and share information, insights, and come and say, hey, you never know. You might get a token if you join our Discord one day. You know? Uh, I love that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Peace. Peace.